Hello my soccer universe and welcome back to the review of the quarterfinals of the AFCON. Well, 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 I have to say I think for the first time the favorites kind of looked like favorites. Although we had two little upsets in there, but definitely for Cameroon and of course Senegal. Uh, this was the first time that I really felt, okay, they are showing that they are really, really good teams. And maybe this is what you would actually hope for that you know that the good teams uh, just need to get rolling first it's just getting through and then you kick into the next gear it also has to be mentioned that both played against opposition that should be easy to go by at any given day uh, which was not so true for the other two semifinals which were uh, quarterfinals which were much more evenly matched we also had, based on the tragedy at the Olympia Stadium, uh, we had the Olympia Stadium closed now. Uh, it is reopened for the semifinal and the final. Um, but yeah, it also uh, caused a weird sky scaling that the Egypt Morocco's uh, quarterfinal had moved one hour early into a different stadium. And then we had two uh, games in the same stadium within very short period of each other and I was actually afraid that this might not be good for the pitch but it actually I think it didn't really affect any of the uh, teams too much so um, that was at least good to see I gotta say. I would say we'll jump in we'll start in Douala where the Gambia played Cameroon and uh, another jersey matchup I mean you it was better than whatever Senegal had <laughs> against the Cape Verde Islands. But I was really uh, surprised that Cameroon did not show up in yellow jerseys. I have to say the red against the green. And then especially with all the colors. I mean, it is a feast for the eyes. But I am not. it was not that easy to distinguish uh, on a quick glance uh, that the uh, two teams. So we had uh, the Gambia in red, blue, green and Cameroon in green. Green, red, yellow. So this, this was the first thing. I, I thoroughly expected Cameroon to play uh, to show up in yellow there. Um, game was kind of uh, dodgy, you know, a little bit slow at first, but um, you could see that after about half an hour, the Cameroon kicked in the next gear and the Gambia was only hold, uh, holding back and trying to shut up shop uh, and hopefully go to overtime which you know at the AFCON sometimes is not a bad st strategy but it happened then very quickly after the first half when Toko Akambi scored two goals uh, and there was no coming back for the Gambia it could have probably even a little bit higher for Cameroon but um, I think starting from minute 30 or so on Cameroon really showed that they are a the better team and probably the best team left in the competition uh, question mark but it it really looked uh, somewhat a convincing win again the Gambia is a very very they're the first time there so you would expect Cameroon to go past them but given what, uh, what Cameroon showed uh, for instance against the Cape Verde Islands uh, this was a much much better showing uh, Burkina Faso Tunisia I think was a um, especially the first time I thought uh, Burkina Faso was this was definitely the more dang da da dangerous even though for a play wise it was a lot more even however uh, from the beginning and this was me despite being more in favor of Burkina Faso than Tunisia although I wouldn't have minded uh, Tunisia moving on but uh, I always felt that the referee was slightly leaning towards Burkina Faso. I mean, all the decisions, he always kind of, um, you know, uh, cl closed an eye if there was something going on. So I, I'm not saying that he was entirely for them, but uh, it didn't look good. It was also the very, very on, and on Kofi had an a injury, but he then uh, managed to play on, although I thought uh, there might be a goalkeeper change. That's a story for another quarterfinal as well. Um, but just as you thought that Tunisia had weathered the storm, because uh, Burkina Faso, again, uh, very dangerous attacks uh, playing forward, and that, and that without uh, their big star, Taraore. Uh, but then Watara, just before the halftime, I mean, he dupes the entire defense. In the build-up, he actually touched the ball with the hand, so I've, uh, that probably the goal should, should have been chalked off if we are really really uh, looking at the rules but he makes it just before the halftime 1-0 again it was only three minutes added and this is something i've seen the fcon there are a lot of time is wasted however the minutes added on are not proportional to that at all it's usually uh yeah take that in half and then you go see what stoppage time uh is coming 
uh, I really felt that this, this first half should have been because with uh, Kofi being injured, probably should have been at least five or six minutes added on. Second half, Tunisia comes a little bit back in, in the game, but unlike a, um, in the um, round of 16, Burkina Faso had two or three count contacts that just could not finish off. Gabon punished them, Tunisia could not. Tunisia had a very valid shot, probably for a penalty, uh, when a ball was cleared by um, uh, uh, Burkina Faso defender really violently and then he follows through and into the knees of Kasri. I understand why it's not given because you know he played the ball but honestly it could have taken take him out and then later on Watara is given a yellow card and then he goes up for an elbow uh, straight red, red record but only after watching the replay I really have to have to say and I can see why the ref did not give it at first but why Valent wants to the, re the replay because in game it's not so good, but once it's a re I mean, he goes and then with the header he pushes back. Uh, yeah, I could understand, but I was happy to, for Burkina Faso to go on. Uh, after the missed out of the 2019 edition, 2017, they finished third. In 2013, they uh, managed to, uh, to finish. Uh, in the final, so let's see where Buka and Kino Faso take. They are definitely the, uh, one of the surprise packages of this tournament. Although they are what I think Mali, for instance, should be. Mali, everyone's talk, talking about when Burkina Faso is the one that actually always finished kind of high. So uh, I'm, I'm really um, happy to uh, see that. Now the big matchup, as I said, had to be moved one hour earlier, uh, was Egypt against Morocco. And I have to say this was, especially in the first, first of a, a rather good game. I'm to be honest, I didn't see all too much because we still were celebrating my younger, my older daughter's birthday, and so we had guests. But I turned, I turned on. We saw the penalty, which was a clear one. Uh, Hakim is brought down, and yeah, uh, once you see the replay, there's no ball played in it. So, and then Sofia Buffal, it took four minutes, uh, converts that penalty to make it 1-0 Morocco. And I felt that from what I could see in the first half, I mean, it was, it was a, a pretty good uh, game, considering uh, the standard of most Momoto games. Um, back and forth a fair with, I thought Morocco was a slightly more mature team, but after the half, it was Egypt that really came out um, and uh, threatened. Um, and I think for the first uh, 25 minutes, Egypt was definitely the better team and they get equals through Mohamed Salah and you could see Salah is was making the difference in many ways uh, with his dribbles. Maybe the teammates are not uh, so accustomed to seeing him play because you know uh, at Liverpool there is a little bit more here. He needs there is a little bit more support for him. Whereas in the uh, with with the Egypt squad he, he needs to be a little bit more selfish and is more on his own. So uh, it's kind of tricky in a way, but uh, he gets equalized. I thought at first it was an uh, offside, but uh, turned, uh, turned out it was not. Um, and then I thought Egypt had the upper hand. However, Morocco did everything to slow the game down and get uh, like a little bit control back. Um, and there was a period around the 75th to the 80th where there was hardly any ball in play. It was more um, bust ups, fights, fouls, uh, discussions, and, and so on. It got really, really tedious. And then um, yeah, it was a header by en en Neziri that hit the crossbar to um, uh, where you really thought, yeah, might uh, maybe Morocco will win that one. But at that moment, I already thought that Egypt controlled the game quite well and Morocco were more or less hanging on. In the second half, that's exactly what, 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 what happened. Morocco made the one made mistake, the ball falls to uh, Mohamed Salah, who makes a run down and sees Trezeguet on the other side. And he can put it in to make it 2-1. Uh, and then there was nothing. Morocco had basically no chance. I mean, uh, exemplary was then the free kick, I think in 120, which was, was on the side, so it was not, he could have swung it towards goal, but maybe, maybe it, it, it was good to play it out to the defender, because everyone was in the, in the box, including the goalkeeper. Uh, 
but he cannot even get a shot off. And then Egypt has a five on one or four on one count counter attack. They completely botch. Uh, why Salah was not taking a shot from the midway line or a little bit further out? It's a little bit beyond me because they could have killed the game off there and then. But in any way, they did it. They killed him time by taking Salah off when the game was not quite decided yet. And I thought, I hope this is not biting Egypt in the back. It did not, because if it would have come to a penalty shoot, Salah is kind of one that you want to have there. But yeah, the big clash ended with Egypt uh, pulling another slight upset, to be honest. Although, you know, both against the Ivory Coast and against Morocco, you would say this is always an even matchup and Egypt is just uh, a class in Africa. You know, I'm quite happy that I got my Egypt jersey uh, a few, a couple of months ago. Exactly because of that, because I knew that Egypt might actually do quite well. So yeah, uh, that one ended 2-1 after extra time. It was probably the closest contested game overall. Um, again, the stoppage time at the end of the game, I think it was only three minutes given. I think I should have been 10 by, with all the time wasting. And then we come to uh, Senegal against Equatorial Guinea, where also it took a while and again, a little bit surprised that Senegal now decided to show up in the dark green jerseys again. Uh, maybe they chose this now, maybe they, to ride it through to the final this way. I don't know. Um, I'm getting a little bit more used to them. I'm still not a huge fan of them, to be honest. So uh, let, let's see. Um, when Ecuador again in red, it was not an egregious uh, jersey matchup, but I also thought... Yeah, yeah, I would have expected Ecuador again to play in another set. But since you have three jerseys, you could have played in a white one, but I guess, whatever. Um, it was tedious at first, to say the least. Uh, and did you see the big bucks flying all, all around? Memories of the 2016 uh, Euro final. But as soon as did you... Did you, uh, after Manet assist, makes it 1-0, Senegal actually really showed that they they can play very, very nice and very dangerously um, and are more li like a team. Uh, I mean, so far they've been solid in defense, but up front there was nothing showing. You know, play them in the evening and suddenly uh, they showed that they're actually quite a good team. Um, and uh, it was Sadio Mane, of course, that gave, gave, gave a lot of danger, but he was not the only one. I mean, this Senegal team is loaded. I would say from all the teams left, this is definitely the most talented squad. They just need to find everything to, 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 to together. And probably a 2 for Senegal at the half would have been a just result. But uh, Ecuador and Guinea, if they can do one, they can be very scrappy and they fight back. Uh, and Buila scores the first goal against Senegal in the tournament. And at that moment I thought, ooh, is Senegal now losing all, all the momentum? No. Kuyate after a horrible defensive error. And I have to say the central defense of Ecuador Guinea uh, did not look good in many, many uh, situations there. They just uh, put the ball to Kuyate, who had just come on three minutes before, makes it 2-1, and then Ismail Sar. 3-1 uh, and Senegal are through to the semi-final where they meet Burkina Faso. And if we look now at the semi-final lineup in the bracket, it's very, it reminds me a little bit of the semi-final that we had at, uh, at the Euros, that there is one semi-final where we have two teams that never have won the tournament and then we have one semi-final where the big boys are hitting each other. Yes, Italy, Spain, maybe not, it should have been France against Germany, Germany would, would be the big hitter in that sense. Um, maybe more like a Euro 2016 uh, semi-final. Well, I think that's uh, a better alternative. But you have with Senegal, yeah, I think it's a very good parallel. Because Burkina Faso is a little bit like Wales. We have Senegal, a team that is always threatening, but never went through to the, through to the next round. And again, you have some doubts. I mean, as I said, they should be the most talented team. But I am not quite sure that they can go through. Whereas in the other semifinal, we have the two biggest hitters in Africa. We have seven time winners Egypt against five times winner Cameroon. Um, the heart says for me, Senegal, I would really love to win them. Finally get over, over the hurdle. The head says both Egypt and Cameroon been there, done that. And especially if Cameroon goes in, they would have a home uh, field advantage. But again, Euro 2016, 
or in uh, Euro 2020 as an example of how this can go. Um, Liverpool fans were probably hoping that both uh, Mane and Salah will come home. Nope, they play all the way through and they might even face themselves, face each other in the final. I would say, if we look at the projection, Senegal, of course, favorites over Burkina Faso. Uh, thanks to home field advantage, Cameroon will also be favorites over Egypt. So uh, I have to say, uh, Cameroon Senegal final. A replay of the 2000 final would be really really intriguing but i would say even senegal egypt final would be nice of course if you ask me well, who uh, what's favorite i mean it's burkina faso senegal like it is there burkina faso senegal cameroon and egypt that's more, more or less the order that i have although i always say that cameroon and burkina faso my fav favorite is but i would love for senegal to finally get over the hump so let's see um it would be a surprise for me if Burkina Faso finishes uh, better than fourth, to be honest. So we have we have to have, have to see it that way. But they have been a really good team, and if Bertrand Traoré comes back, I think they can do something. Uh, thanks to Senegal being so favored over Burkina Faso, they are also the favorites to win it all. Cameroon and Egypt, yeah, I think it's a very, very tight matchup. They are second and third, respectively. And that will be the semi-final, you know, at least to uh, look forward to it. It will be a full stadium also. So I think that could be a very, very interesting one. When will those be played? Let's go back to the first uh, the first one. On the second, we have Burkina Faso against Senegal. So that's in two days. And then Cameroon against Egypt is on the 3rd of February, so on Thursday. And then final to be played uh, also on Sunday then. Okay, that was it from me. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop anything that you want to add to these uh, matches below. And yeah, I'm going to talk to you soon with more FCOM. Up until then, bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.